Are you a literature lover? Are you tired of reading literature that does not resonate with our time? Do you have questions about literature? If so, welcome to the podcast My Two Cents Worth with Odilia Wakesho Mongori, the platform that discusses literature in relation to our times. I am uniquely Kenyan and relevantly African, hence my focus, African literature. In this video, I will be highlighting that the concept of women liberation is still an illusion in today's Africa. Hence, deception has been used as a tool of defense. A candid reality check. Please listen till the end. You will definitely have food for thought. Let us see. Women As we proceed on with this concept of women liberation and the idea of deception, ladies and gentlemen, I must share with you a piece of female deception research that I bumped into just recently. The research was conducted by Wed et al. Department of Psychology, Bucknell University. Firstly, and I quote, women employ deceptive tactics in order to align with male's preferences. End quote. Is this a question of women liberation? Secondly, previous research by Camille 1991 discovered that deception typically involved women altering their physical appearance, altering the appearance of their body through behaviors such as wearing facial makeup and exaggerating their hip movements while walking, and withholding their age. End quote. Consistent to this thinking, do you think that the concept of women liberation is entirely disfigured? Or do you actually agree that deception is a tool of defense when we speak of liberation? Weirdly enough, you won't guess it. This so-called alteration of physical appearance by women is purely motivated by male's general preferences for what or how attractive and youthful looks like. Hmm. A moment to take some gasp of air. Hmm. You may ask, what is the reason behind all this? Well put. Let me refresh your memory. My proposition is, the concept of women liberation is still an illusion in today's Africa. I then put forth that the reason for this is that deception has been used as a tool of defense by women in putting a facade of how well they are happily living. A perfect picture of their utopian families, right? This is where I welcome you in, my dearest listener. Kindly take a quick look down your memory lane or backtrack the stories you have heard on the countable ways of how women really are taking on deception. Hmm. Please share some of them here in on the comment section below. I'll be waiting to read them. Oh, I have just remembered. Have you watched the Kenyan series, Single Kiasi? I bet you should. This will really make you empathize with what we women go through in order to fulfill some socioeconomic 
and cultural expectations. Therefore, we seek after deception to shield us from the misconception of quote-unquote playing victims. Right. As a food for thought, let me quickly highlight to you the main reality checks of deception and question form. Then, you may go on and explore more within your own context. Number one is financial deception. How many a times do you see our young women falling into the den of soft life? Running after the deceptive way of living. A call to recall, therefore mentioned. The reality of financial capacitation, all factors held constant, is something that will significantly liberate the 21st century African woman. Number two, self-deception. How often do you see older women, better yet, career women, opt to be in pursuit of ticking the boxes societal norms in order to fit the bill of a perfect successful woman. This is a deceptive self-thinking, a construed thought that is downright self-singling into believing this woman is not enough. What do you think? Once again, please add more deceptive meshes by women in the comment section below. In summation, I think it is evident enough to state that although we do appreciate how far we have come on matters women liberation, we must also take note that unless we change this new wave of massive feminist movement that is clearly full of malicious competition against the male gender, we will definitely become our own enemy of liberation. Hmm. Honestly, I do acknowledge some of our contemporary writers of postmodern African texts that continually seek to highlight the modern woman under the context of our today's Africa. A quick reference is in the novel Confessions of Nairobi Women by Joanne that year. A book that unfolds a candid look into the life of a Nairobi woman today. The societal pressures, the deceptiveness, the decisions she faces, and the consequences that follow. Have a read on it. It is thus high time to reconsider, to retrace our footing, to recollect our individual selves in deliberately defining what the concept of women liberation really means. And it is in so doing that we will actually experience the ultimate liberation. That's all I have for you today. Kindly subscribe and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.